So undoubtedly the most common request I get on my channel is can you do a grade from start to finish? Show us the whole thing, we wanna see everything. So I'm gonna do that in this episode. I'm gonna show you every little tip and trick and little secret that I've got and I'm gonna show you that on an actual job. This is a real commercial I did last year. It's actually a Christmas commercial so I thought it'd be quite apt as we've got Christmas in about 10 days time. So I'm gonna really go into it in detail, so stick with it. You don't wanna miss any of these steps. So the first thing is the brief that I had. Obviously it's make it Christmassy. We want it cozy, warm, bright, pretty saturated. So that was the brief I was given and let's go and take a look at what I did. So this is the actual project that I worked on. We've got 11 shots on this commercial here, but it was actually about 13 different versions of this. So a fixed no tree is really important. My no tree here is my 17 no tree. I've got a few different ones that I use depending on the project. And it's basically three serials here, four parallels, three serials, another four parallels, and a couple on the end. And I'm gonna show you exactly what's in each and every one of those. And I think the best way to explain that is to show you a, a copy of that, but with all the grades taken off. So I'm gonna hit another version here. Now you see we've got absolutely no grade on here at all. So if I press Shift and D to bypass, absolutely nothing going on at all. That's just the flat log image from the ARRI camera. So I've got a few, all the grades have been taken off, but I've got a few nodes where I've just disabled it. And that's because I've got an effect sitting on there and it saves me rebuilding that effect. But I am gonna show you exactly in detail every single menu that I've changed. So I'm displaying my scope so you can see the levels as well, but normally I'm referencing my omniscopes, which are on a nice large screen beside me at all times. So the first thing we've got to do is look at our color management. This is quite clearly flat and log. We want to do something with it. So I'm going to go into my project settings here, color management, and my color science is set to just DaVinci YRGB. I'm not in the automatic color management, which means I need to use CSTs. And I've done a whole episode on how to use CSTs. I'll put a link to that in the description. The other thing I've changed here is the timeline color space. So we're in DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. And my output color space is of course Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 because that's what my monitor is calibrated to and that's what my delivery format is. All right, so quickly we need to build up the CST so we can actually come out of log and get into a nice good starting point. So my first node here is gonna take us from ARRI Log C into DaVinci Wide Gamut because that's the working space that I want to use for, that's the working color space I want to use for my grade. So I'm gonna to go to my effects here, just show you quickly exactly what I've done on here. ARRI Wide Gamut 3, ARRI Log C is my inputs and my output DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. So I'm gonna color grade in DaVinci Wide Gamut and what I need to do is be able to see that in Rec 709 because my monitor is Rec 709, not DaVinci Wide Gamut. So I need to put a end CST on. Now normally what most people do is they go right to the end and they will put the CST here. I put my CST to get me back to Rec 709 earlier than at the very end because I like to, I'm gonna put it on here. Let me just put it on first. So I'm gonna switch it on. Now we can see things correctly. Even though I'm gonna color grade in DaVinci Wide Gamut color space here, I've just saved myself a few extra nodes for things that I like to grade in Rec 709 color space, not DaVinci Wide Gamut. These are things like Dehancer, um, some of the glows, grain, some things like that. Uh, I like to work after the Rec 709 uh, color space transform. I think I'm pretty much on my own on that, but that's how I work. I'm, I know what I'm doing. I am a professional colorist. I've been, I've invoiced and been paid for this job and the clients use me again since. So I'm quite happy with my workflow. But normally you'll see people put it right on the end. The only time I would put that CST right at the very end is if I had to do a HDR deliverable in, because then it would make my color management a lot easier. You literally just switch at the end and it would go from 709 to HDR. I hope that makes sense. If not, check out that CST video in my description. So just to show you the settings in here, I'm gonna to go to my effects. Obviously I'm going DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. So ARRI to DaVinci, DaVinci to Rec 709, grading everything in between with a few spares on the end. All right, let's get into the actual grading. So I'm gonna start on my node number two. And the first thing I need to do is analyze my scope. So let's have a look what's actually going on on the image. Now I've got highlights peaking right up here. That is quite clearly from this lamp. So I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna deal with that on a separate node. And everything else is looking pretty okay. So I'm just gonna give it, I think we need a little bit more exposure on our subject's face. First thing I'm gonna do before I actually grade is just play the clip. Let's just see what's actually going on. Right, so quite clearly I can see that his face actually lights up as it moves down. So I need to be wary of that when I'm grading, but never just take your first frame as the grading frame. So what I'm gonna do is flick into HDR mode 
and I'm just going to adjust my exposure slightly. So I'm just going to lift it up. I'm not worried about the lamp blowing at the minute because I'm going to fix that in a moment. So I'm just lifting it up a little bit here. Nothing crazy. It's pretty well exposed. In fact, the colorway and the way the set was built and the wardrobe and everything is giving us that nice Christmas feeling. Anyway, we've got beautiful greens and red. Saturation is pretty strong. I'm going to add a little bit just to see, but it probably is good for me. Sometimes what I do is I sort of push and then I'll pull back again. Uh, so I'm going to go into my primary settings and I'm just going to pull down a little bit in the lift. I'm just keeping an eye on my scopes here that I don't get anything weird happening. And I'm just going to go and adjust my offset a little bit. Just I'm just trying to get his skin tone looking good. And to measure that, I can actually put my mouse on his skin and I can see that on the scopes. I'm looking here at that line. And you can see there you get a little circle. And if you want to bring that up, you need to go into your settings and it's display qualifier focus. Now on my Omniscope, I don't need to worry about that because I can actually just grab my mouse and I can sample skin really easily like that at any time. So that's a really cool feature with that. So I'm just gonna lift up my gain a little bit more than that and I think we're good. Now I want to use a film print emulation LUT on here. So that's gonna change the color quality just slightly. So I need to add that at this point before I grade any further. So that is obviously down at the end because I'm grading underneath it and it's sitting here. So it's the Kodak 2383 LUT that comes with DaVinci Resolve. I'm just gonna activate it now. And just to show you what's going on here, because this is a compound node, I'm gonna right click and say, show compound node. This one here is taking me out of Gamma 2.4 and put me into Cine Film Log because that's what that uh, LUT is expecting. And this is the regular Kodak Film LUT. So I'm gonna come back out. So that way you know what's going on here. So I'm just gonna enable and disable that. But you see that gives it a really nice, really nice poppy highlights. Nothing's gonna change down here too much apart from a bit of the, um, the tone and the color in the, in the shadows. But I'm really liking that. So now I can carry on grading, but I'm now looking at it underneath my Kodak Film Lut. All right, so now I'm happy with our subject exposure and the skin tone is looking good. I'm gonna move on to the next point and that is to get this lamp down. So I'm just gonna pull this back a little bit. I'm going to put a window around this and this is going to have a really nice soft edge on it so you're not going to see what's going on here. I just need to move my scopes over a little bit. I'd normally do this with the panel but I'm doing it in the software so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now there's several ways to get this brightness down. So I'm keeping an eye on my scopes up here but one of the easiest ways, in fact, if I put that onto, not vector scope, but if I put that down onto my waveform, I can see that clearer. So I could use curves, I could use my HDR tools and what I found the best result I got from this was actually using the highlight tool and my gain. So I'm just gonna bring my highlights down a little bit. I don't wanna to go too far. Let's go somewhere around about there and then I'm just gonna bring my gain down a little bit. If I went too far with the highlights, this starts to get a little bit dirty. So I'm bringing that down. I'm gonna bring down my gamma a little bit as well, just to get a bit more definition in his hand here. But as you can see, you can't see that shape at all. I've got that really nice and loose. And I'm just going to warm this up a little bit. So I'm going to just do that with color temperature. It's probably the quickest way. So let's just check before and after. Every time I create a new node or every time I've done work on a new node, I always just switch it on and off after I've done the work just to check that I'm actually improving the image. So if you're enjoying this grade breakdown so far, think about subscribing and hitting the like button. It does make a difference. I know people ask all the time, so I get it, but it does make a difference. In the meanwhile, let's go and have a look at the rest of the grade. All right, so I'm gonna move on to my parallels now. And this is where I start doing a lot of my windows and shapes and that sort of thing. I've done a whole episode on parallels. Link will be in the description, of course. And first thing I wanna do is just pop our subject out a little bit more. So I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna create a shape, something like that. Again, let's get some softness going on. I'm gonna move those scopes right out of the way for a minute. And I'm just gonna straighten here and just lift a little bit up there with my gain tool. I'm just keeping an eye on those highlights as well. Let's just play that through just to check. I'm just gonna check the color temperature on here as well, just see if we can get that any better. Maybe somewhere around about there. It's only slight, but that is looking better. So, and I want to do the opposite of that. I want to affect the outside of our subject. So I'm gonna take my key feed here, feed it into the next node down, and I'm just gonna invert that. And now anything I do on here, affect the outside and you can see that's helping that lamp as well now I'm just bringing down my gamma a little bit let's see what happens with offset 
something like that. And what I want to do is see the result of the two of these. Now I'm just going to add a little bit more color temperature into there. And let's highlight the two of them, enable and disable. So then I'm seeing the result of the two nodes together. So that's looking much better now. So reanalyzing the image now, let's bring our scopes back a little bit, see what we've got. But just reanalyzing, we've got a little bit of peak going on here. So this red is pretty vibrant. That's quite clearly his scarf. So I'm going to address that on the next node. So let's click down here and move that out of the way again. This is why I like having scopes separately on an external monitor. And the first thing I'm going to do is key the scarf. So I'm going to go to my Kia. I'm going to grab a 3D key and key through here. And I put my highlight tool on, which is up here if you don't have a panel. And it's clearly qualified far too much range, so I'm just going to reduce that using the negative tool. Let's get rid of all this extra stuff that it's picked up on the qualification. And that's looking a lot better. So what I can do now is use these cleanup tools in here just to get that finessed a little bit better. I don't have to get this exact by any stretch of the imagination. All right, and just to finish it off, I'm going to put a window around it just to make sure. What I'm trying to do here is protect his skin. I don't want his skin being affected by what I'm about to do. And I'm just going to track that because I can. Even if it doesn't need tracking, I just track because it's so quick to do. Now let's take off my highlights. And what I want to do now is go into a curve. I'm going to use this one here, which is saturation versus luminance. So what that does is uh, obviously luminance high, luminance low, and uh, low saturation to high saturation. And what this tool lets me do is drop luminance in the most saturated part. So it's just going to make his scarf look a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is just draw some points around here. And I'm going to switch that on and off. And you can see that works really well. It just takes that edge off the scarf. Okay, now it's still sitting quite strongly up here. So I'm going to reduce saturation a little bit as well, but only a little bit. So that's before and after. And that's pretty much it. There's one more thing that I'm going to do, but again, just because I have 17 nodes doesn't mean I'm necessarily using them all. It just allows me to be flexible when I'm working with big projects like this. And you can see I didn't actually have to do too much to this image to get it looking great straight away. I'm just going to check his skin tone as we move through, which is good. But the main work was all just done on one node here. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually after the 709 node, and this is using this effect here, which is called Dehancer. I use Dehancer all the time. I love it, but I find it works better in Rec. 709 than it does in DaVinci Wide Gamut. Uh, there is a later version than 5.3.0, so that might be why, but at the minute I'm using it in Rec. 709. And I'll show you exactly what I'm doing with it. I'm coming down here and I'm adding Halation. So if you don't have Dehancer, there is a Halation tool in DaVinci Resolve. I've done another episode on Dehancer versus Halation in Resolve. I'll put a link to that in the description, of course. And I'm also using Bloom here. So if I just switch this on and off, you can see mainly where that's working is around his face here. So it's just giving it a really nice, subtle glow. But look how subtle that is. I've hardly got anything going on because what I do is I drop the impact down from full right down here. And again, same with the Bloom. I don't have it as shiny as that. Let's just put it right back. And it just adds a nice little bit of texture to the image. So I hope that's answered what you wanted in the comments. You wanted to see a full grade breakdown. That is the actual program. I've left no stone unturned. I've showed you every single node. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.